guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And look, I just did my hair again. <laughs> I literally just left the salon. You know, I was just craving some change for the spring and now is the time to do it. But I figured I would sit down and film a video because somebody else did my hair today and I, I love that. I was like already ready to go. But no, today's video is gonna be a little bit different because today I wanna talk about some things that have been on my mind and I'm gonna let you know. Uh, these are some things I have been kind of picking up on recently in the skincare community that I really do not like and I, I don't think that they are good things. So bear with me because I'm going to give you a piece of my mind and vent about four things that really annoy me in the skincare community. So if you guys are so ready to find out what they are, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that really gets me going, <laughs> something that really annoys me in the skincare community, it's actually really a combination of things. It's really about aggressive ingredients, high percentages, and instant gratification. So let's kind of start with uh, aggressive ingredients, and I'm really referring to chemical exfoliation, like your AHAs, your BHAs, even vitamin C, retinol, tretinoin, you know, the really powerful ingredients. I have nothing against chemical exfoliation. I think it's amazing, and I think it is one of the most powerful tools sort of in our skincare toolbox. You know, they it can really give you meaningful results in a pretty short period of time. They're amazing, absolutely. And that is what I see a lot in the skincare community, that they are amazing, that they are, are powerful, and they will give you results very quickly. And I think that we put such a heavy emphasis on the fact that these ingredients do work so well for your skin. We do often tend to forget to be cautious with them. We do tend to forget to give the advice that you should go slow, embrace patience, listen to your skin, understand that all of these ingredients aren't necessarily all meant to be in your skincare routine. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Everybody's skin is so different. Everybody's tolerance levels are different. I don't see a ton of education around that. I have to admit, I really don't. I don't see a lot of discussion around patience. Something else within this category that really bugs me is, you know, percent chasing or really kind of going after the highest percentage in an ingredient possible now this is really this is really twofold I mean this is not only in the marketing from brands but this is also just like within us as consumers I think that we really do latch on to the idea that more is more right and in some cases more definitely is more but when it comes to a lot of these ingredients that we like to see in higher and higher and higher percentages you're actually not gaining any more benefits. You're just percentage chasing. I'm particularly thinking of um, Paula's Choice recently came out with a niacinamide 20%. It's like, do we really need a 20% niacinamide? No, <laughs> but it sounds incredibly unique. It stands out as being super powerful. We think in our minds 20%, nobody else is offering 20%, so that must be the most potent one on the market, right? It really plays on our psychology a little bit because we really do want more. And yes, it, it makes sense that more would be more, but in this particular instance, it's really not. You know, niacinamide, just as an example, this is a really interesting ingredient with lots of benefits for your skin. It's a wonderful ingredient. Usually in clinical studies where we do get our data about how, you know, ingredients impact the skin, the benefits that they can give your skin, where we get all our information, right, about skincare is from these studies. Niacinamide is only studied in 0.5% up to 5% of niacinamide. There's really no proof that more niacinamide equals more benefits. There is, however, some evidence and some proof that higher percentages do come with higher amounts of side effects yeah like skin irritation um definitely so the trade-off here for a bigger percentage that's maybe unstudied is not necessarily giving you better or faster or bigger results you're just kind of starting to get into the territory of things that potentially could cause side effects on the skin 
that's not, I'm not necessarily saying that these products do, but what I'm saying is you're not necessarily getting more, you just think you are. And that's what I mean about percentage chasing. We're not necessarily gaining anything by going bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, instant gratification. I mean, that really ties into the two points that I just made about, you know, using maybe slightly more aggressive ingredients, maybe overusing them, and also going for higher and higher percentages. It really comes down to the root of instant gratification. We really crave that as skincare addicts. And it's normal. It's absolutely a normal feeling to go through. I think a lot of us come into skincare because we're trying to solve a problem on our skin. I think a lot of people come into skincare from acne, um, or maybe you have a dull skin tone, sun damage, uneven complexion. There's something that we want to solve or improve on our skin, and we want our products to do it. And so we do definitely crave visible results on the skin, instant gratification. We're all looking for it. We're all seeking for it. And I do think we get a little addicted to that feeling. And it can sort of force us to go a little bit faster with our skincare than our skin can really handle. And that's just something that I see just as a vibe in the skincare community. This will give you results fast. This will work fast. And we all love those products. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying like, I'd love to see people embrace a slower, more patient route with their skincare journey. And I do call it a skincare journey because that's how I feel about it. It is a long-term thing. There are ebbs and flows to your journey. There are twists and turns on your path, right? It's not really just like a, you know, A to B sort of like fast track to great skin. You have to embrace the journey of it all. And I would like to see more of that messaging coming through, not just from brands, but also from influencers and people posting reviews online and really just kind of embracing skin. And like I said, all of its ups and downs. Instant gratification is great. It certainly has a place. It just should not be our main concern when it comes to taking care of our skin. So the second thing that really annoys me in the skincare community is when brands purposefully mismarket their products. I'm going to give some examples in just a second. I really don't think that these brands were trying to be malicious in any way. I think they're just trying to market their products in a unique way that make them stand out. But when you're kind of going for that, you sometimes can unintentionally give the consumer the wrong idea or misinform them or kind of help them to form like ideas that just aren't quite right. And that's why I think that this is uh, marketing practices that really should be called out. I really think that we should be aware of them um, because like I said, it can really start to give us the consumers the wrong idea. So here's one example. I actually have a couple of ones, but one example that's kind of hot right now, and it's actually something that I've personally talked about on my channel already is the Inkyless Succinic Acid Acne Treatment. So I have, I really like this product, by the way, I think it works super duper well, but I have talked about this product a lot and I've told you succinic acid's not really the star ingredient. The name is interesting. It makes it stand out. You, It makes you actually think this is a new ingredient that Inkyless has discovered and I've told you, it's not. This is an ingredient that's been around for a really long time. It's just a way to make this sound more interesting. But actually, if you look at the ingredients list, you will quickly find out that sulfur and salicylic acid are the ingredients that are working hard on your pimple, making this an effective spot treatment. I did not actually put two and two together until I watched a recent video from Michelle, AKA Lav Muffin, where she actually said basically the same thing, but she actually Actually brought up a really important point that I had kind of failed to recognize was the fact that because they were putting this succinic acid um, front and center on the name of their product they actually kind of got an unfair advantage in Google essentially because this term had no Google traffic until this product came out and so don't tell me that inky list didn't know that right so that has really kind of given them a slightly unfair, if you will, advantage over the market because now, like I said, you know, it does make the product stand out in your mind, 
but now it's actually giving this product a bigger advantage and it's starting to give people the idea that this is some kind of miracle ingredient, this succinic acid, because we've never heard of it. But in fact, it's actually a buffering agent that's in lots of different products. And that really is just an ingredient that functions uh, to adjust the pH in um, skincare products. So it doesn't really sound that interesting. They really do benefit from kind of mis misguiding us a little bit on this ingredient and making us think that this is the ingredient that's doing it and it can only be found in this product, right? So I'm not really trashing the brand. Marketing is marketing, you guys. You gotta understand that. And um, I think this product works really nicely, but I just really wanna kind of like lay that all out because you should know the ingredients that are working in your products. And trust me, it's not the succinic acid in this one. Now, another deceptive marketing tactic that you find in K-Beauty particularly that really annoys me, and you've heard me talk about this before, you know this riles me up, right? You know that uh, propolis is not honey, okay? <laughs> it's not honey, it's never been honey, it never will be honey. There are a lot of brands that would have you think that propolis is honey. They want you to believe that propolis is an interchangeable word for honey because it makes their products sell faster and better. Why I think that this happens is because particularly if you want to rewind yourself back like five to 10 years ago, what the f is propolis, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 10 years ago, we were like, what's propolis? I didn't necessarily know what propolis was. Um, it's definitely been used for a really long time. It just does not have name recognition like honey. You know, propolis is also a bee byproduct. It's kind of like a mixture of like sap, from like the surrounding trees and like bee saliva, it actually kind of creates this gluey substance. And that's actually like what holds the honey bee hive together. It really is bee glue. Yeah, that's not honey though. Honey is a completely different product that bees make. So they are adjacent to each other, but they're not interchangeable terms, meaning the exact same ingredient. But because we do have such a high regard for honey and a high name recognition for honey, it's a lot easier for a product to come out and say the honey blah, 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 but actually contain propolis. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's just easier for the consumer to understand maybe what the product is going to do or what it's going to be like. But it is deceptive and it does miseducate us on ingredients because I've had so many people tell me that <laughs> this particular product the ultimate uh, moisturizing honey overnight mask from Casa Rex, and you know what I'm about to say about this. This contains no honey. I have been told time and time again by people that propolis is honey, and it's not. It's just that misinformation is so prevalent in our minds that we, we, we actually aren't even catching on to the con here, you guys. It's called the honey overnight mask, but there's no honey in it. So. Again, they're cashing in on your recognition of honey, but they're actually relying on propolis, which is a fantastic ingredient. And this also is another product that I really, really like. Now, I just wanna give you guys a quick update. I just found this out um, in the last month. They have actually renewed this product. It has new packaging now, but they have added honey. So Casarex, maybe they've heard my videos. I doubt it, <laughs> but you know, I've been talking about this for years, um, but they have actually fixed that. Now, here's another one. This is an old school sheet mask from you so long. It's their propolis sheet mask, but look at the packaging. Y'all, this is honey. <laughs> this is honey. That's not what propolis looks like. And there's no honey on the ingredients list again. So this is just another example of that trend of really tricking your mind into believing propolis is honey. It's not. So the third thing that annoys me in the skincare community is probably uh, something you've been thinking about a lot recently too, because it's quite a hot topic recently. And that is really the use of the words clean and natural. Yeah, these really start to drive me crazy, especially when brands market themselves off of these terms. You know, look, the word clean is really not regulated by anybody. There's no set definition for what clean means in skincare. If I asked maybe just five different people, 
what would clean mean to them in beauty products, I would get five very different answers. What I would say is clean is not what you would say is clean. I don't think that we could all agree on one set of rules for what the word clean means. And because it's actually an unregulated term in beauty, it can be used any which way to describe really any product, you know what I'm saying? There's really no 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 regulations, no strict labeling requirements for the use of the word clean. It doesn't necessarily mean no fragrance. It doesn't necessarily mean no parabens. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. And when you are able to use such a strong term like clean in an unregulated atmosphere, just willy-nilly slapping it onto basically anything, there is this kind of like weird sort of consequence to doing that because, and this is why people do it, because it inherently makes the product that is labeling itself clean look better. And the product sitting right next to it on the shelf that doesn't say clean in our minds means dirty. I don't like the idea of something being clean versus something being dirty. I don't think that there are dirty products out there, if that makes sense. I think that there are products that maybe don't line up with what we want for our beauty products. Definitely, everybody has a right to choose what works for them. But I think that when you label something as clean, there's got to be the alternative out there. So there's got to be something that is dirty. And then the problem is none of us can agree on what the term clean means. So it is a useless term, but it's got some really negative consequences. And there is kind of like this this theory out there about you know consumers we really do want to feel good from our purchases i think they call it like a warm like a warm candle effect or something like that it's like you know when you pick the clean product it makes us feel good it makes us feel like we did something right we like that feeling we like thinking that we made a good choice in our products that we put our dollar towards something we believe in or something that feels good and so I think that a word like clean can be used to really, yeah, deceive us, to really kind of play on our psychology a little bit. You don't even know what's happening, but I think that it can give certain products a like a competitive edge that other people just aren't getting. I think you can make other products look bad, um, even though they're not necessarily bad. And as I said before, clean is not regulated. So what you term as like a dirty or bad ingredient could be in the product labeled clean and could not be in the product not labeled clean. It tells you nothing, it's completely meaningless, and it's got some really negative consequences. The other term that, you know, is getting a lot of heat recently is natural. And, you know, it is something that does bother me, but I also love that there is actually a lot of conversation happening around both of these terms now. Um, and I think that that's a really good thing because these terms, I think, play upon our desire to educate ourselves, but sometimes, like I said, it really does deceive us. Natural sounds great. However, natural does not necessarily mean better. There's a lot of natural things out there that are not good for you. And while I was never really like into fully natural skincare, it's kind of like greenwashing something. It, it just feels kind of good when you're like, well, I picked the natural product though. You know, it's like when you feel good about picking, you know, a, an apple for a snack instead of a bag of potato chips. It's the same kind of like feel good sort of vibe that you get when you pick something that says all natural on it, even when you know better, right? I'm just saying it makes you feel good. There is an emotional thing that happens. Yeah, I, I like the word natural. I've, I've recognized that about myself, but I can tell you I've been burned by natural products so badly. And I mean like literally burned on my skin. <laughs> That whole kind of like, you know, only use things that you can pronounce sort of movement. I think it's a little tired. I think it's kind of worn out and I don't think that it's served us very well. I am in favor of ingredients that have been highly tested and formulated specifically to be used in a skincare product placed on my face. I'm actually in favor of that instead of something that was just kind of picked out in the in the wilderness, right? It's completely like not regulated or tested or controlled. I have developed um, intense uh, sensitivities on my skin to essential oils. I actually didn't have that sensitivity before. I didn't develop the allergy to them until they were in all my products. 
and I continue to expose myself to uh, essential oils every single day for uh, nearly, I think it's about a year, maybe a year and a half that I was using essential oils in my skincare and I ended up with really badly irritated, really, really sensitized skin. And now I actually have more sensitive skin coming out of using essential oils. I, I, I basically developed an allergy. And in fact, I do have sensitive skin, but I tend to tolerate artificial, man-made fragrance much better than I can tolerate essential oils at this point. So that's just one example. You know what I'm saying? That's just an example of why natural is not better. That's my personal opinion with my personal experience. It did not work out for me. And so I am an advocate for saying, look, if you want to be natural, that's okay, but just don't turn around and say that that's unnatural. Does that make sense? Don't greenwash it. Don't, don't think that you're making a better choice necessarily than somebody else or that only this product can be good and those products have to be bad. Just know that you're making the right choice for you, but that's not necessarily going to be the case for everybody. And finally, my fourth annoyance, something that I really am feeling very passionate about lately in the skincare community, something that really bugs me when I see it come up. And really, I guess the way I would title this, my fourth thing is, one way is not the only way. I see so much split, so much division in this community. Uh, and it's not even just like one or two, it's, it's a fraction of quite a few different things, but it's just so extreme. And it really is people thinking there's only one way to do skincare. There's only one right way, and it's probably their way, right? And there's not a lot of tolerance and not a lot of empathy and openness for other points of view. And that really, really bothers me. Everybody's body is different. You know what I mean? It really, your skin is your body. You know that bodies are incredibly unique. You know that everybody is a little bit different. The ways that our bodies work are amazing. It's like a miracle, you know what I mean? But we all know that we're all just a little bit different. We're all built a little bit differently. Uh, we all work slightly differently. We have all the same parts and everything, but it just expresses itself in a very different way. And I don't see a lot of that being embraced in the skincare community. Do you know what I mean? You know, you'll see the phrase a lot, um, what works for me may not work for you. And I kind of used to get annoyed by that because it felt like a cop out, but it's actually just like the truest thing on the earth. It's just like, if you know, this product here, you know what I mean? Like if this product works for me, it actually may not work for you just because it, it did something good for me. It could actually do something bad maybe for you. And both of those experiences can exist and coexist in the same space. And I think that that's something that we're, we're missing a lot of the times is that both of those opinions are right. Both of those experiences are right. And they can actually exist in the same plane of our like consciousness. Do you know what I mean? We could have very polar opposite experiences with the same product and both both of those those experiences are correct. I think that this a lot of this stems out of the desire and the craving for rules. We want to win the skincare game. We want to do skincare correct and right. We want to win it and be the best at it. And it's like, that's not a thing. You can't win skincare. You can't be the best at skincare. Do you know what I mean? Because like I said, everybody's body is different. That means that your skin is going to be different. It's going to ebb and flow. As I said before about the journey and embracing patience, it changes. It's a living or like organ. You know what I mean? Your skin is an organ that is alive and it changes and so rules aren't necessarily going to work because you have to adapt to your skin just doing its thing you know what I mean now let's kind of go back to the main thing here though which is one way is the only way and that's wrong I think a lot of it as I said earlier comes down to us craving rules but I think another big part of it is coming down to influencers who are trying to distinguish themselves in the very busy internet space. I'm gonna say it just bluntly and plainly. We want to stick out, we want to be individual, we want to have a point of view that is unique. That can get you into some tricky waters though because when you're saying, hey, follow me over here, I can promise you the secret to winning skincare, 
it does kind of give you the idea that one way is the only way and that that usually is my way right or their way or whoever's way that's a problem in my mind because you're perpetuating an idea that a <laughs> inspires division within the community it inspires a lot of people saying like no you're wrong and i don't i, don't, I hate that i think that that's not right and it really doesn't embrace the individuality of skin and the if I could only impart one thing to you when it comes to being into skincare is that you just have to embrace that your skin is going to be different. It's going to change. It's going to be wild and weird and wacky and that that's actually a good thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you just got to, you, you will learn its signals. You will learn how to work with it. But I think a lot of the times we end up working against our skin because we don't embrace that it's different, but we, we think that there's only one way to do it. And it's usually the way that we're being told by somebody on the internet. So I guess really the biggest change that I would like to see from all this division and my way is the best way. No, my way is the best way. You know, I think that we really should, as consumers, really get our information from multiple sources. You know what I mean? There are so many knowledgeable people on the internet these days giving out amazing advice and fantastic videos, blog posts, podcasts, you name it. There are so many great experts in their fields who are helping us be better at our skincare game, you know what I mean? So I, what I would really say is don't just watch one person or one source for information, you know what I mean? Don't just look to dermatologists, don't just look to skincare formulators or just influencers. Get your information from a variety of sources because that's gonna inform your journey. That's gonna give you a sampler platter, if you will, of wonderful, fantastic advice and you can try it on. You can take a nib little nibble of this cheese, a little bit of that cracker or whatever. You know what I mean? It's a weird analogy. You know, dermatologists are gonna help you with skin conditions. You know, chemists and scientists and skincare formulators are going to help you understand your products better. People like me who talk about testing so many different products can really help you narrow down what to buy. Everybody has their zone of genius. Everybody has something to offer you. And it's up to you to take your, your information from a variety of sources and figure out what fits you and your skincare journey. It's just a very different experience for everybody, kind of coming from the place of embracing every experience, being right in every experience, coexisting in the same space. You know what I'm saying? Instead of my way is the right way, your way is the wrong way. Well, don't use fragrance. Well, don't use essential oils. Alcohol is damaging your skin. What you have to use AHAs. You're over 30. Why aren't you using vitamin C? Just like, stop. <laughs> embrace your journey, embrace your individual skin, and embrace everything else around you. That's what makes this a community. And I think that we should really embrace community more these days. I feel like we've become very split and I would like to see that heal. I would like to see us come together with a little bit more understanding. I think we are working towards that. I think we will get there, but it's something that I think that we need to remind ourselves of, um, that everybody is different and there's no one right way to do skincare. Whew. Okay, I got it off my chest. I feel really good actually for, for getting it out because it's like, I have no one else to talk to about this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody in my real life wants to hear this. They're like, what are you talking about? I'd be like, look, there is so much division in the skincare community today. <laughs> They're like, I don't care. No, um, it feels really good to get it out. And maybe these are some things that were kind of like on your mind too, that you're like, hmm, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this or not. So hopefully me letting it out was a good thing. Maybe it's something that you can relate to. Maybe it gave you a little bit of inspiration. It definitely made me feel better. So I invite you in the comment section below to air out your grievances. If you have any, if there's some stuff you see with brands or with influencers or just in the skincare kind of community uh, on social media, just stuff that maybe kind of rubs you the wrong way. I'm curious to know. So uh, definitely let me know in the comment box below. If you did enjoy this video, um, please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I release two new skincare focused videos every single week and don't forget to turn on notifications. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.